get my shoes and out the door. Five, I'm alive, six, seven, eight, feeling Hey everybody, welcome back to the Beyond Your Wildest Genes podcast. I am your co-host today, Dr. Mike Akinfora, and today I have with me Dr. Amy Myers. Dr. Myers, how are you? Great, how are you? Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming on the show and sharing with our audience and our community. So I'm going to read Dr. Amy's uh, bio real quick, and then we're going to get into her book, The Thyroid Connection. Amy Myers, MD, is a renowned leader in functional medicine and two-time New York Times best-selling author of The Autoimmune Solution and The Thyroid Connection. She is the founder and medical director of Austin Ultra Health, a functional medicine clinic that treats patients from all over the world who are overcoming chronic illness. She's been featured on The Dr. Oz Show, The New York Post, Women's Health, Huffington Post, and numerous other television programs, radio shows, and print publications. She's helped hundreds of thousands recover from chronic illness through her dietary-based program, The Myers Way. And she has created multiple programs, tools, and free resources to guide readers through her revolutionary approach to health. Uh, Dr. Amy, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome. Can you tell our audience, give them a little background, tell us about your journey. Well, my journey is quite lengthy, so it is the first chapter in each of my books is my journey, um, but I will give you a uh, abbreviated version, which is the reason that I am so passionate about doing what I do is that I myself suffered from autoimmunity and Graves disease. So my second year of medical school, I am trained as a conventional physician primarily and then did my training through the Institute for Functional Medicine. Uh, during medical school, I started having panic attacks and tremors and weight loss and horrible insomnia. Uh, went to the doctor. She basically told me there was nothing wrong with me and brushed me off as a typical medical student, thinking that I just had everything I was learning in medical school. And I knew that I had never responded to anything this way. So I insisted on a full workup. And she came back later and told me that I had Graves disease and, um, you know, basically was offered medication or surgery or having my thyroid blown up like Hiroshima. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I grew up with parents that really had a holistic view of, of health. And um, we grew vegetables and my mother made homemade whole wheat bread and yogurt growing up. So, I mean, I kind of had this idea that food was medicine and I went to medical school after the Peace Corps, but thinking that knowing that I really want to do a more holistic approach, but I wanted the MD degree. So kind of these suggestions or quote unquote solutions that conventional medicine had for me really didn't sit well with me. I mean, I thought, you know, that all of those seem pretty extreme. So I started with the medication, thinking it was the lesser of the three extremes, and eventually ended up with toxic hepatitis from the medication and ultimately knew no other choice but had my thyroid ablated. So, you know, even though conventional medicine, you know, quote unquote, solved my problem, I knew that if I hadn't really gotten down to the root cause, I was going to end up with more problems. I mean, the statistic is that once you have one autoimmune disease, you're three times more likely to get another one. And, you know, frankly, the next time it could have been something even even worse than what I had. So I really began my journey of back to my roots of wanting to go to medical school and practice holistic medicine. I, you know, focused on finding what other alternatives there were and eventually found my way to the Institute for Functional Medicine and um, did all of my training through them and eventually opened up my practice and started working with very complex patients from all over the world with autoimmunity and thyroid dysfunction and eventually kind of came up with what I think are the five factors that I know we'll get into that are really the the basis of, uh, you know, most chronic disease, certainly autoimmunity and, and thyroid dysfunction and came up with my dietary-based program that is in both books, The Myers Way. So uh, let me ask you a question. There's just me and you on the phone and, you know, a couple hundred thousand folks listening. Why write a book? Um, Well, so in my clinic, I see uh, one new patient a day, and I was at the time working four days a week. So that's a matter of literally, you know, a hundred to two hundred people whose lives I could affect. Uh, when you write a book, I literally get to help hundreds of thousands of people. So the number of people and you know around the world that I'll never meet, you know, the book has now been translated into I don't know how many different languages. And so, you know, to be able to have that big of an impact, um, you know, I mean, I literally get a little teary eyed over here. It's it's 
it's amazing. Um, you know, we call it the Myers way because it's a way of life. And even though I'm seeing one person in my office, it's not meant to only affect that person. It's meant to affect hopefully everybody in the, the family. Of course, many of the people I see are women, more women than men get autoimmunity. They get more thyroid dysfunction. They tend to be, think more outside the box in terms of their health. So more of my patients, probably 80% are women. And so I hope that it's a mother or a wife sitting there and that she's making the health decisions and the grocery decisions and the food decisions for the family and um and I am affecting more than one life but still even at that rate it's you know in the in the you know single digit thousands that I'm affecting versus a book <clears throat> or being on a podcast like this you get to reach so many more people and I've always been a person that thinks big you know it's never you know, just opening a clinic wasn't good enough for me. Just affecting a couple thousand lives a year wasn't enough for me. I mean, I say I was failed by conventional medicine and it's my mission to not have it fail you too. So, you know, I'm on a big mission and it is to help empower as many people as possible to take back their lives, to know, you know, I can't get my thyroid back, but I have helped many people save their thyroid, reverse their Graves disease, not have to have harsh medications or to be able to get off of them and to save their thyroid. Um, and of course, when we're talking about my book, The Autoimmune Solution, helped many, many people with very chronic uh, autoimmune conditions, reverse their conditions, get off immunosuppressive drugs. And, um, you know, it can't help absolutely every single person, but there are many, many people that can feel significantly better and many, many people who can get full recovery by going through the program. And there is definitely a, a, a different way, another way to to treat these health conditions. I, I love that. Uh, I love that approach, and we use the same approach in our chiropractic office as well. Um, how long were you in practice for before you started and completed Institute for Functional Medicine? Um, well, I kind of did it all fast track. <laughs> I remember <laughs> calling them and saying, you know, I went up and I actually shadowed Mark Hyman. I was one of the first and few people that that had the chance to do that way back when and you know said if I if you could only do one training what would it be and he told me oh I would do the the gut module and so I remember calling the Institute for Functional Medicine and saying I haven't done the foundational course but I want to do the gut course and it says I have to do this is that okay and you know, after talking to me they you know they said that was fine and you know for me like I said this is something that was in me before I even went to conventional medical school. I mean, most people don't have this story. Most people have the story that they've gone into, you know, maybe they picked chiropractor, they picked osteopathy, or they picked naturopathy because they already had this, you know, sense of it's all interconnected, or they had a more functional or holistic approach. I had that in my mind, but yet I wanted to get this conventional medical degree. And so there are not a lot of people that kind of go into conventional medical school knowing it's not what they're going to do. I mean, it's hell. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. you went through chiropractic school, you know, I mean, yep. and, you know, add residency on top of that and everything. And, and it's, you know, it's hell. So it takes a lot to do that, knowing that you're ultimately not going to end up doing that. So by the time I started doing my training with the Institute for Functional Medicine, it was really somebody not really teaching me how to do things, but more giving me a roadmap. It was like, oh, that makes sense. So I already kind of thought of things that way. So I caught on to it like super, super quickly. So I started, um, I mean, it was all very quick. I literally heard Mark speak um, in February. By May, I think I was shadowing him. And by January, I quote unquote opened my clinic. So in less than a year from me, hearing the word functional medicine to opening my clinic was very quick. And then I'd probably done maybe two trainings before I opened my clinic. Now, my clinic started in a very interesting way. I actually started um, going to people's houses. Not many people know this because they don't normally ask me any of this, but um, – <laughs> I was still working in the ER and uh, because I didn't have the finances to just open a clinic and I was scared and I didn't know who would come and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so I had what one would call a concierge practice, but 
really I went to people's houses. I had no overhead and I had no space. I basically charged people for my time. I was practicing functional medicine and I went to their house and did my consults and interviews there. It was very fascinating because I could open their pantry and their refrigerator and, you know, see what they were eating, see what supplements they were taking. It gave me a very insightful, clearly, uh, view into their lives, very personal lives. And I would spend, frankly, hours at their house. And then eventually, you know, that got so um, busy. And then I was working in the ER. I, I remember hiring my first consultant. And, you know, she kind of was like, okay, if you work this many hours, you see this many patients, you can get out of the ER and you'll need this much money to buy a computer and hire a person and rent a space. She figured out this whole thing. And I can just remember, you know, like looking at the spreadsheet. And every time I would get like a new patient, I could like take a day out of the ER. And I was just like watching the days, you know, in the ER disappear. And my goal was by the end of that year to have my own physical clinic because I worked part-time in the main trauma center. I was an ER doctor and part-time in the children's pediatric uh, center ER. And that was the time of the swine flu here in Texas. And it was uh, so busy. And I was like, and we were understaffed because it was a new hospital. And I was like, I am not spending another winter in that ER. Like, <laughs> come hell or high water, I will get out of the pediatric ER. Like, that was what motivated me was like to get clients and open everything up, not obviously to help people as well, but it was also like self serving that like I could not handle another winter in the children's ER in flu season. It's just too much for me. So that was my journey. And then, you know, it went from me and one person to, me and a nutritionist to, you know, now I have a nurse practitioner and another physician and two nutritionists. And, um, so it's, you know, really grown. And that was all in 2000, I think it was 2009 when I started seeing people in their homes in 2010, when I opened my clinic and here we are in 2016. So it's only been six years, two books later and <laughs> multiple, you know, employees. Wonderful. I, I, I people get a better idea of who you are and what you do. I love I love people's backstory, and I love interviewing authors. You're so passionate about what you do. And listen, we all have clinical practice, um, but it's when you sit down and I'm I'm in the middle of writing a book now, and it's it takes a lot of work to do it. And that's why I love to sit down and, and talk to talk to folks like yourself who do that. So let me ask you a question. I, I want to get into the, the book. And why do you think at this point in time in the world that thyroid problems are so epidemic? Because they are. Yes. And it is not because we've got better at diagnosing it. Um, in certain ways, we've probably gotten worse at diagnosing it. You know, um, the TSH uh, blood test has been around for a very, very long time. Uh, and we can get into the problems with that and testing in general and why it's getting so missed. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably a larger, well, I know it's a much larger epidemic than we even know because so much of it is getting missed. And we can, again, get into the failure of conventional medicine. But <laughs> I think it is, you know, in general, autoimmunity is on the rise. It is, uh, it is, um, you know, in the last 50 years, it's gone up threefold and most thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune in nature. And so our genes really haven't changed. So what's changed? And that would be our environment. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, in both books, um, you know, I talk about them a little bit differently, uh, but in both books, I talk about sort of the five environmental factors, and that's the diet we're eating, our leaky guts, uh, our toxic world, the fact that we're super stressed out, and then, you know, infections and how all these relate. And then specifically to the thyroid is um, this idea of the halides and iodine. And we are really an iodine deficient society that, you know, not only are we not eating iodine like we used to just naturally in our diet. And of course, it was in our salt and they stopped putting it in the salt. Uh, but then we're being bombarded with the other halides, which are chloride, bromide and fluoride. 
and they look very similar to iodine in our body and they are displacing iodine in the body. So it's kind of a double whammy of where iodine deficient coming in and then we have more uh, what I consider toxins to be displacing the iodine and those are coming from our food supply, coming from our furniture and rugs and carpeting and, you know, flame retardants to our water medications. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, specifically to the thyroid, um, that's something that clearly I talk about in the thyroid connection that I don't really talk about or discuss in the autoimmune solution because that's very specific to the thyroid. Our thyroid requires iodine in order to make our hormone, and it is where most of the iodine is stored in our body is in our thyroid. So I think that that's one of the biggest specific to the thyroid. And then if you want to get in any deeper on you know any of the other five factors, I can certainly talk about those as well. I, I do. Just back up for a second. Where were we getting the iodine from? Sea vegetables um, is is probably the the biggest source. I mean, there's a lot of thought. You know, I mean, our breast tissue and our and with women, our um, ovaries also have iodine and iodine receptors, and it's certainly one of the thoughts behind you know in Japan and the Asian countries why there's less breast cancer. Um, is I mean, there's a lot of hypotheses, but certainly one of it has to do with their much higher iodine um, intake uh, in their natural you know, food source. And of course, as they're getting more of a Western diet and away from that, they're seeing their rates skyrocket. I mean, we could get into that as well about, you know, just industrial nations with autoimmunity in general. Is that, you know, the, uh, is that the uh, idea of, you know, that we're too clean of a society in these certain places in uh, developing countries had more parasites? Is that because, you know, they're now eating more processed foods, um, they're exposed to more toxins in, you know, in an industrial world, they're probably more stressed. I mean, it's, you know, I don't think it's any one thing when we're talking about these chronic illnesses. I think it's, you know, all of them together. You know, often write or talk about in, I mean, you can extrapolate this for the thyroid connection as well, but I talk about this in the autoimmune solution, which is, you know, I could have three people in my office with rheumatoid arthritis, or let's say I have five people with rheumatoid arthritis, and, you know, each of them, the reason they have rheumatoid arthritis could be vastly different. I like to think of it like a pie chart of these five different environmental factors, and, you know, one person could have gluten being the biggest issue, somebody else could have uh, Epstein-Barr as their biggest issue, somebody else could have that they're super stressed out and somebody else could have a leaky gut and somebody else could have um, heavy metals or toxic mold or, um, you know, or iodine deficiency. I mean, why somebody has one of these diseases, even though it's the same disease, could all be for a different reason. Now, by the time you get into my office, most people have, you know, some aspect of all five pieces of those of the pie. It's just which is the biggest piece that we need to address you know, right off the bat and which ones can we address, you know, down the road. Sure, sure. Now, you have such a unique perspective because you are an MD. How does conventional medicine and functional medicine differ in their approach to thyroid dysfunction? Well, I think the best way to answer that is, you know, what are the failures of conventional medicine? And okay. I think the first failure is that often, you know, they're just not even checking the thyroid. I mean, if you're a man, it's not as common. So they might not check it if you're a man. If you're a woman um, or in general, the symptoms of thyroid dysfunction are can be very vague for a lot of people. They often, you know, thyroid dysfunction shows up in women a lot of times during times of change, hormonal change pregnancy being one, uh, perimenopause, menopause. So a lot of the symptoms can be brushed off as a symptom of that. You know, you're tired, your hair is falling out and you, you know, have 10 extra pounds, but you just had a baby. Well, the doctor might just say, oh, well, of course you're a new mom. Of course, that's what it is and not even check you. Then when they are checking you, as I mentioned, they're typically only checking a TSH. They're not checking what I consider to be a full thyroid panel, which would be a free T3, a free T4, a reverse T3 and then thyroid antibodies to know if you have autoimmune thyroid or not, which again, in conventional medicine, they don't think it makes a difference. In my world, it does make a difference. Um, and we know that when they were going to make the reference ranges for the TSH, that they accidentally included people with thyroid dysfunction in 
the mix. And so many people, including the Academy of Endocrinology, believe that this reference range is way too broad. So there's normal and then there's what I would consider optimal. Mm -hmm. And often, you know, they're looking at normal rather than optimal. And so there's a whole group of people that labs are in fact normal. And my book is for those people, but they're having all these symptoms and they, their labs may not be optimal. Um, so the, and then, you know, a TSH is just really checking at the pituitary level and not really looking at what the thyroid's doing. So, you know, they're often not checking the right test. And then when they check the right, even if they check the right test or likely they don't, they're looking at outdated reference ranges. And then another big difference is they're really not looking to find the root cause, you know, and they're certainly not looking at nutritional deficiencies. And our thyroid in particular needs a lot of nutrients in order to make this conversion from the storage T4 into the active free T3 and in just to make its hormone in general, you know, tyrosine and iodine. We need B vitamins. We need selenium. We need zinc. We need magnesium. We need vitamin A. We need vitamin D in order to like make it convert it and then get it in the cell where it needs to work. And often people are just nutrient depleted. And so they just don't have the nutrients they need to make this conversion. I mean, it's one of the biggest reasons I see for, th for thyroid dysfunction. And so simply just getting them the nutrients they need to help make this conversion can be all the difference. It's not even a matter of needing to go on supplemental thyroid hormone. I mean, it's why I, I actually formulated a, a multivitamin to go along with the book because you know, it has what I believe the amount of zinc and selenium and vitamin A and vitamin D, you know, it has what, what I think is the, what someone needs to help with this conversion process. Absolutely. And, and you just, you just said uh, six or seven, all minerals. And we know that the standard American diet, which most people come in and see us are on a standard American diet. It is completely depleted of minerals or at least bioavailable ones anyway. Absolutely. But the other end of it is I see a lot of people who are coming in and they're eating a great diet. You know, they found me in the paleo community sure. or they've read my book, but their gut's so messed up that they're not absorbing it properly. I mean, I, you know, change the saying of you are what you eat into you are what you digest and absorb. And so I see that all the time. People who are actually eating really good diets and uh, I mean, at this point in time, I get very few people coming into my clinic after having, you know, written two books that are still eating, you know, a really terrible standard American diet. I mean, occasionally I do, but most people try to get help with all the resources that I have for free or the books, you know, and try to do it on their own. And many people have success with that. And some people are so complex they need or they just want, you know, some additional testing or, you know, to, you know, frankly, just to see me or one of my colleagues. So we see it frequently that this is that this is somebody a small bowel bacterial overgrowth and they are not a, you know making their B vitamins they're not converting, you know uh, the other part is that you know something like sixty percent of your thyroid hormone is converted in the gut and when your gut's messed up not only may you not be absorbing these nutrients but you might not make be making that conversion, so that's just another area I mean which is why both books have a uh, lots of quizzes in them to see, do you have small bowel bacterial overgrowth? Do you have candida overgrowth? Do you have parasites? Do you have leaky gut? And, you know, give you um, a step-by-step -step guide of how to get rid of these infections because it really is all about the gut. I mean, we already mentioned with the thyroid, 60% of it's converted in your gut. And in general, since most thyroid dysfunction is autoimmune in nature, nearly 60 to 80% of our immune system is sitting in our gut. So even if you don't have digestive issues, a lot of times there is a problem in the gut uh, that we need to fix if you have autoimmunity or thyroid dysfunction. What percentage would you say uh, of folks that do come in to see you have have gut issues affecting the thyroid? Um, well, I would say that most people I see have gut issues. Okay. I mean, it's probably one of the reasons, you know, they've tried to do the book on their own or they've done the book on their own and they went through the program and it helped. But, you know, they just couldn't get some you know, they really need testing to know exactly what it is that they're trying to treat. Or, of course, in the book, all what I can offer are um, are supplements and natural remedies. And people are, you know, want the big gun of the prescriptions. I mean, it's one of the besides thyroid, supplemental thyroid hormone, something to kill something in your gut is really the largest, you know, set of prescriptions that I write in my clinic. So I think um, but 
I do so many things with people at one time that I can't tell you that like I fixed the gut and then suddenly their thyroid is converting and that was the only problem they have. I mean, people are coming in, we're changing their diet, we're getting them on a good quality multivitamin, like I mentioned, we're fixing their gut. And so by the time people get to me, there are occasionally people that really want to go one step by two step by three step. Mm -hmm. But by the time they've gotten to me, they've, you know, tried everything. They've been everywhere. You know, they've gotten on a plane, they've flown across the country. They're like, just give it to me. You know, I just um, want to be well at this point. So sure. let's go as quickly as possible. And I'm, I'm sure you see that in your clinic as well. So it's a, a little bit harder to, um, but those people come in and they're borderline on their labs and we get them on a good diet and fix their gut and, and get them on the multivitamin. And then a couple months later, their thyroid labs look beautiful. You know, we, that's, where I'm saying, you know, fixing the gut and, and, and the supplementation, the vitamins often can fix that situation. Absolutely. So you talk about getting to the root cause, but let's talk a little bit about how stress affects uh, the thyroid. So um, one, I mean, stress affects the thyroid in, in a myriad of ways. Um, when we're stressed, our body, um, I mentioned in the labs, you know, there's free T3, which is the most active form of the thyroid hormone, and that uh, there are receptors on every cell for that. And then there's reverse T3. And I like to think of free T3 like the gas and reverse T3 like the break. So the importance of getting that free, um, both of those labs, is that when I see somebody with a really high reverse T3, I certainly think about stress. You know, our body is putting on the brakes, trying to conserve, saying, you know, something's going on here. We we don't have, you know, the energy to 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 give the gas. We need to be conserving here. Uh, of course, I think about heavy metals and some other things as well, starvation. But stress is one of the biggest things I think about. Um, stress can cause leaky gut, which then leaky gut can lead to, you know, autoimmunity and thyroid dysfunction. Stress can also um, lead to hormonal imbalances like higher estrogens or estrogen dominance. Um, when we have stress, we have high cortisol. High cortisol um, causes our estrogen to rise. When our estrogen rises, it binds up our thyroid hormone. So um, in just kind of backing up, often you might hear somebody, you know, your doctor or maybe even an interview or a book you're reading, you know, talk about like mine, the thyroid, right? Mm -hmm. Or read a, hor a female hormone book or read an adrenal book. But we have to think about how like you and I are on Skype right now and I'm not just sending one signal to you and you're sending it back to me. You know, on the internet for us to be on Skype, there are all these signals going out all over the place, you know, for us to talk together. And that's what's happening with all our hormones. So we never need, can look at these things in isolation. I mean, our blood sugar to our, um, to our sleep hormone with, with melatonin, to our female or male hormones, to our adrenal hormones, to our thyroid hormones, all of these things are talking at all the time. So if one of these is out of balance, they're all going to get out of balance. Sure, absolutely. So if we're stressed, we're going to deplete our, uh, deplete our adrenals. Our adrenals are talking to our thyroid. Um, if we are stressed, the cortisol is going to come out. It's going to affect our blood sugar. Cortisol is going to come out. It's going to affect our, uh, estrogen, whether you're a man or a woman, and, and send out more estrogen. And then again, when we have too many of these hormones, particularly estrogen, we produce these proteins to bind it up. And it inadvertently it binds up your thyroid hormone as well. It's why a woman who maybe is on supplemental thyroid hormone and she goes on the birth control pill and she suddenly requires more thyroid hormone. Or it's a woman who's on supplemental thyroid hormone and she gets pregnant and she needs more hormone. Or somebody wasn't on those things and, and they did these things and now they suddenly need thyroid hormone. Well, that's why it's from, or one of the reasons why, um, is this excess estrogen or higher levels of estrogen that have been produced either exogenously or from the outside from the birth control pill or internally from, you know, getting pregnant and producing estrogen to, you know, support the, to build up the, uh, uterine wall and the placenta. I, I love that. Thank, thanks for diving into that. That's that's huge. So I, I we don't have a, a lot of time left, and I want people to read the book, but I do need to talk to you about your way of doing things. Could you talk to our audience about the Myers Way 28-Day Program? 
Sure. So the 28 day program is really, you know, the first part of the book. Well, the first part of the book is kind of my story and explaining how the thyroid works. The middle chunk of the book is all those five root factors that I discussed, you know, so I talk about our food supply and what to do about that. I talk about leaky gut and again, go to have some quizzes for you about, do you have candida or yeast overgrowth or small bowel bacterial overgrowth and what to do about that toxins, infections and stress. And then the, the last part of the book is the 28 day plan. And it's it's 28 days. Each day is laid out for you. We have a full meal plan. We have recipes to go along with it. I mean, half the or a third of the book is is you know recipes, and the plan is is um, helping you walk through those environmental factors. So changing your diet, fixing your gut. Um, I have a stress relieving part to the program that I have you doing activities every day, uh, relieving stress. We can't get rid of stress, but we can relieve stress. And, um, and it's really just, you know, walking you through those 28 days. Uh, I forgot to mention with the thyroid connection as well is very much a book that is meant to be in partnership with your physician and you don't need to go get a functional medicine physician. I mean, some people may need to, but the book was not intended. I mean, I mentioned in the first part of this interview, my goal is to help as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to write a book that you could use your current physician. And so it is, you know, tells you what test to order, how to interpret the test. I have a letter in there to give to your doctor. So you can say, look, here, this is what I need you to do. And it has actually been amazing to me, the number of people who have written emails or posted on Facebook, like, I brought your book to my doctor and I thought it was going to go really terribly. And I, you know, amazing stories of people or I bought a copy for my doctor and they said, oh, thank you so much. I was wanting to learn more about the thyroid or I've heard about this book. I mean, I literally have goosebumps talking about it. It's been incredible. Now, I'm sure there have been people who've had bad experiences. Not many have written. So it is this is what it's intended to. And I think that it's um, when you approach your doctor, it's a how you approach them. And then the fact that I am a medical doctor, that that gives that doctor a little bit I don't want to say peace of mind, but maybe they don't feel as threatened by the book. I'm not sure. But it's really that's what this book was intended to be is a companion to work with your doctor. Because if you do the diet and the program, but you're somebody like myself, I would die if I didn't take supplemental thyroid hormone. If you your thyroid has been damaged for 20 years and you've been on Synthroid for 20 years and you're not on the right dose or the right type of medication, you the diet is going to help you feel better, but you're not going to ever feel as optimal as you could and vice versa. If you're just on the prescription and you're not doing the diet and addressing the root cause, A, you're leaving yourself open to something else and B, you're not going to feel as good as you could. So it's really a partnership between those two things as opposed to my book, The Autoimmune Solution was like, hey, get off these immunosuppressive drugs. Here's how to do it. Follow this program, you know, kind of like not don't work with your doctor, but really just work with them to get off your medication. This is supplemental thyroid hormone that many people like myself will need. And so this is a partnership with your doctor. So that's probably the biggest takeaway of this book is it's meant to be a partnership um, with the program in the back to do. It's um, my, my story is similar in that it involves my wife and she had cancer, um, had a hysterectomy right after that spun her into uh, medical menopause she goes back her thyroid's out of whack i tell her well you really need to be paleo you know to be gluten free and she does that and then from there we've just embraced functional medicine with her medical doctor and we've seen how all her numbers and how she looks feels and functions have fallen into place because as you said it's not just one thing it's right. the stress it's the um it's coming into contact and, and changed i mean changed everything from deodorant antiperspirant all of that has changed not just the food Right. So, and, and not just the medication that she obviously she needed to live going forward. So right. I, I think, you yeah, need, 
Yeah. I like to think of it as supplemental thyroid hormone because it's like a, a type one diabetic needing insulin. It's a life saving hormone. And yes, there are people that I have helped not have to go on it. There have been people who've gone on it and been able to get off of it. And those are people who were newly diagnosed. But if you're somebody out there who's had this for 20 years and there was enough damage to your thyroid that is a vital organ that you need, if your thyroid can't produce what it needs, you need the med- you need the supplemental thyroid hormone. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. I mean, right. that doesn't mean you fail. Nope. That does not mean you failed. And because there's so many people out there like, oh, I reversed my Hashimoto's and, you know, everybody doesn't, you know, can get off this medicine. And I have them all come into my office and like, I have to get off of this. I feel like I failed if I haven't. Well, if I didn't take it, I would be dead. Literally, I would die. I don't have a thyroid. So there are people that can do that and wonderful and kudos to all those people promoting that and did that. But don't make the people who can't do that feel bad because some people, it takes an average of five to six years to get diagnosed and up to 10 doctors sometimes for people and damage was going on. And, you know, and, but, you know, with the Graves disease, you can follow the program. And I didn't mention that there's a, not a separate program for Graves and that, then the fact that the stress and the diet part, because we're dealing with the immune system are the same, but there is a track for those with Graves with different supplements and, and thyroid calming herbs. So you don't have to go on the medications like I had to do. And there have been people who have, you know, reversed their graves doing this program. So that certainly, um, you know, can be done and, and save your thyroid and from having to go on the supplemental thyroid hormone. But, um, and the only other thing that I would say is also, um, on my website, we have a list of resources and there's a lab that I've partnered with. I don't get anything out of it. If you go there, um, just if your doctor won't order your labs, cause again, I couldn't write a book that required knowing what your thyroid is doing and getting labs and then have people's doctors not get their labs for them. So if you even get in a bind and your doctor won't order your labs for you, you can get the name of the lab off my website and, you know, order your labs there. You know, I mean, you have to pay out of pocket, but it's a pretty significantly reduced price compared to, you know, ordering them yourself at a regular lab. Sure. Um, What I truly love about your book is the quizzes that you have in there. It really helps to dial it in for for anybody that takes the time to read it. it it's it's that's a big deal. Um and I, I really appreciate that as somebody like yourself who we're talking to people every day, it really makes a difference that they have that right in front of them. Yeah, I mean I do think that, you know, as we started out this conversation before you and I actually went live, I mean, one of the differences between myself and this book potentially compared to or, you know, other books is that, you know, I myself have a story, right? I mean, I understand the thyroid from a personal perspective. I understand it from a conventional perspective of being a, you know, trained MD and then from a functional medicine perspective and being a clinician. And so, you know, people comment that in fact, several people have said like they couldn't put the book down, that it was like a page turner. I'm like, well, that is the biggest compliment of like writing a semi like medical scientific book and mm-hmm. that it's a page turner. But um, because I have to talk to people every day in my clinic and see their expression when I explain something that they don't understand or come up with a way for them to understand it. Um, I know you were saying writing a book was really difficult. I love it because mm-hmm. it, actually writing a book is very easy for me. It's, it's, you know, is one of the things that I really enjoy because I like explaining things and I like explaining it into taking complex information and making it simple for people and giving them enough information to know like, okay, she knows what she's talking about. There's a science to back it up. Um, there's, this is scary enough that I should listen to, but not so much info that you get freaked out about it. And then I provide the solution, which is what most people want, you know? So absolutely. Where can people find you in the world? Yeah, everything is Amy Myers MD and Myers is M Y E R S. So Amy Myers MD.com is my website. And then all of my social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff is just Amy Myers MD. M- Amy Myers MD.com. That will be in the show notes. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we depart to our audience? No, just, just that there is hope. And that you do not have to let conventional medicine fail you. There is, there is, there is hope. And the other, I guess the other thing that I would say is that this is not an either or. You know, this is not, um, I have to do this and then I'm, you know, shunning all of conventional medicine. These are meant to be, uh, to work together and that it's not an either or situation and just that there's, there is hope and that there are plenty of people out there, um, 
you know, showing that this can be done and that these things, these diseases can be reversed. And we have a free online community if anybody wants to join it, of anybody reading the book or going through the program. And that's just amymyersmd.com backslash community. And, uh, you know, come on over there and, and join us as well as Facebook. I will have that in our show notes. And I really want to thank you for taking the time to be on our program today. I greatly appreciate your time, Amy. Thank you. Thank you so much for helping me get the word out. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, everybody, if you would please do me a favor, and if you like our program, which I know you will, go to iTunes and leave a review and a five-star rating. Let us help you get the word out about what we're doing. And I hope you have a great week, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao.